I'm Abby Hanney, a sixth form student at Denby School, currently studying my extended project qualification, also known as EPQ. I'd like to know more about the project, so what better way than to talk to the researchers, teachers and students involved. First, I'm going to be sitting down with Open University Professor Rick Holliman. So Rick, what do you do at the Open University? Uh, I'm a professor who works in the Faculty of Science, Technology, Engineering and Mathematics and I'm interested in communication of information, communication of knowledge. So why did you help with the extended project qualification? I uh, helped for three, three groups of people really. So I was interested in supporting school students um, in accessing new knowledge. I was interested in supporting teachers and I was also interested in supporting academic researchers. So if you think we are constantly seeing new knowledge being produced, so research, which produces knowledge, is defined as uh, a process of investigation leading to new insights effectively shared in public society. So the interesting thing is how do you make sense of that new knowledge? And I think the extended product qualification allows us to do it for those three groups. So how did you help with the EPQ? So we've worked across schools in Milton Keynes, we've worked across nine schools in Milton Keynes and what we're looking to do is to help students at four different points of the research cycle as they do their EPQ. So that's data um, conception if you like, conception of the research, um, so how do they move from a blank sheet of paper to having a question that they can ex uh, explore, so we've done work with students in that area. Uh, we've helped them in data analysis, so how do they access knowledge in sophisticated ways, how do they filter that information how do they analyse it and then how do they respond to it. So that last one is really about how do you help people communicate their research uh, from their APQ effectively. So we've helped them in three of those points there. Uh, so how do they conceive their projects, how do they source information and how do they communicate it. Why do you think it's important for researchers to work in schools? Well again I think it's important for the three different groups that I mentioned earlier. I think it's important for school students who are having to develop skills, transferable skills and how they access information as, uh, as they move through their lives. Uh, and I also think it's important for teachers and researchers um, and we found that with uh, working in, in collaborative ways in, in planning for these kind of activities uh, teachers gain new knowledge about their research areas or their teaching areas um, and researchers get teaching skills from working with, with teachers in sophisticated ways. What top tips would you give to a researcher wanting to help an EPQ student? Yeah, I think the, the obvious first tip would be to say you have to engage with the student at their level. So let them tell you what they're interested in is a good place to start um, in language that makes sense to them. And then the crucial thing, I think, the thing which I've found that students really struggle with is that kind of critical analysis. So how do you take more than one source of information, compare it to another source of information and come to some kind of reasoned position which is defensible? Um, and that really, if you can get that skill, then you can study at university. That's a real kind of independent scholarship skill. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I'm here at the Open University Library to sit down with Dr Karen Olson francis a researcher for the EPQ. I'm going to talk to Karen about the importance of a researcher for this project. So firstly, I'd just like to know, who are you and what do you do? My name is Karen Olson francis I'm a university lecturer at the Open University and I study life in extreme environments and the plan is to find out what we can find about life on Earth and use that to find life elsewhere in the universe. So why did you decide to help with the EPQ? I thought this was a great opportunity to take what I've learned since I've left school and um, to bring it to um, the classroom. So an opportunity to take what you learn at A-level and apply it to everyday science problems that we, we deal with every day. So how do you think you've helped with the EPQ? I've helped by offering advice and support during the planning period and also during writing up. And also I've helped students um, direct them in the right direction towards publications and help them to um, understand what sources on the internet they should avoid and what they should actually believe in. What tips would you give another researcher that want to help students with the EPQ? I think being involved in the EPQ is um, as it's a fantastic opportunity as a researcher, I think the key advice I would give is to make this as personal as po possible. Try not to do everything by email. Using phone and Skype is a really good opportunity to have face-to-face -face communications, which makes it a lot easier for the students to relate to the researchers that, are being, that they're interested in working with. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I'm here at Oak Grove School to get a teacher's perspective on the extended project qualification. 
Why do you think it's important for students to study the EPQ? I think the EPQ, unlike most A-levels, will really get students to uh, work independently uh, in terms of the planning of the whole project, the de uh, decision about what question to go with, uh, in terms of the research skills, they have to go away and conduct primary research, sometimes secondary research, which they are leading the way with most of the process. 99% of the work comes from the students, uh, not the teachers or the mentors. What's the biggest challenge for you as a teacher supporting people doing the EPQ? The biggest challenge is probably the fact that we can't get involved too much. Uh, we have to defer to the students as much as possible. Uh, the students have to, again, plan the work themselves, come up with a question themselves, uh, even throughout the research process. Um, we can't prod them too much in a certain direction, do this, do that. We might be used to doing a bit more spoon feeding with most of our subjects, whereas the EPQ, it's really got to be the hands off and we have to leave it to the students to, to independently do the work. Now, sometimes that means that students do a, an amazing job and, and get a lot from it. Uh, sometimes we have to be willing uh, to let students fail because that's part of the, what makes the EPQ the EPQ is the independence, succeed or fail, it's all down to the student. How do you go about supporting students doing the EPQ? At Oak Grove School uh, we start it in the summer month of, uh, of year 12, so at the end of year 12 uh, we do two full days of talk sessions where we uh, talk about what the specification requires in terms of the structure of the course, in terms of uh, the expectations on the students part. Uh, we spend two days where they plan, they um, deliberate over the questions, they come up with their final question, uh, they begin part of their research and then actually after those two days um, they, go, they go away over the summer months and they conduct most of the work independently outside of school. Uh, in September we then have a, th have a third taught day where we review how students have done. Uh, by this stage they've usually um, completed their essay for the most part, they've done all their research and it's really a case of what we do to support them um, is we check that they've gone about it the right way, uh, we check that it is independent and rigorous academic work. Um, and then also every student's got a mentor who will be working with them before the summer and then also after the summer who, again, without being too hands-on and saying do this, do that, uh, they do kind of advise them about what's gone well and, and possible quite general areas that they could improve on. How have researchers helped to support the students on the EPQ? Well, first of all, um, we've had uh, some very useful involvement from the Open University uh, where researchers have come in to speak to our students and advise them about research techniques, primary research, secondary research and different um, kind of qualities of literature about which ones are more uh, rigorous and acceptable versus the kind of internet sources that are, that are often less, less useful. And so we've used their expertise to help launch the students on their EPQ. Uh, now, quite a number of our students have then uh, gone off by themselves and actually contacted researchers from around the world. Um, a couple of years ago, somebody contacted uh, a research uh, lecturer in an American university to try and get um, some additional help from them. And usually researchers are, um, are very helpful and forthcoming to help our students with it. So what tips would you give another teacher looking to support EPQ students? Uh, firstly, I'd say for any EPQ coordinator, they need a very uh, good team around them. Uh, they can't rely on one person to handle the whole EPQ course for the school. Um, I see you need a, a dedicated team of mentors um, at Oak Grove that they're volunt voluntarily um, uh, act as mentors for our students um, who are um, interested in the course, who are willing to give up their time uh, to advise students and help them through the process. Um, other than that, I would say um, schools need to be prepared to let students fail. Uh, now that's not something schools are usually used to um, because we have pressure for, for grades, uh, getting students through coursework for instance in lower school. Um, however with the EPQ, because it's often done as an additional qualification, I think the only way students will get the maximum out of it is if they are allowed to, to fail and therefore all of the, um, the quality of the work that they produce is down to their own hard work um, and what they've gained from the process uh, through independent work and ultimately succeeding or failing off their own back. Thank you. Thank you. I decided to ask students why they study for the EPQ, what topic they chose and what they got out of the project. For my EPQ I studied using music therapy as alternative forms of medicine as opposed to the conventional forms of medicine in both physical and mental health and I mainly studied for my EPQ because I thought it would benefit me since all I'd really study is sciences and maths and this would give me a bit more creative freedom. I decided to study for the EPQ because it gave me um, the opportunity to do an English-based subject, which I'm not currently doing at A-levels. Um, the topic that I chose for my um, EPQ is the dehumanisation of refugees. For my EPQ, I chose sexism in the media, and I chose it so that I could 
develop my skills and get a better and just well, look for the universities. I studied for the EPQ because the amount of freedom it gave me in my writing and, I st and I, my topic I'm choosing is if marijuana should be legalised for recreational use and or m medical use. I studied for the EPQ because I thought it would give me an advantage when applying to uni because the skills that you gain from the EPQ are really well linked to the skills you need to succeed at university and the topic I chose was prisoner education and prisoner reoffending rates. I studied for the EPQ as I was only taking three AS levels at the time so I wanted to take another qualification that made me more attractive to university. Um, I studied the nature versus nurture argument in terms of criminal behaviour focusing on the Cray twins. I studied for the EPQ because it would help me gain more of an understanding for the topic I wanted to do at university. So I decided to study Brexit and how it related to anti-migrant attitudes in the UK. Uh, I studied EPQ because for my university uh, I'd get lower entry requirements uh, for the course I'm applying for and my question for the EPQ was is feminism compatible with the culture in the Middle East? I created my EPQ by going to my advisor. I spoke with her and she helped me structure an essay and give me a basic outline and then give me a guideline for all my research and took me to the Open University so I could do some further research. And because I'm doing a monologue as part of it, I had to start by looking at a practitioner and um, look at the sort of style that I wanted to do my monologue in. Um, and then I went about looking at refugees and the situation that they're in. I chose a topic that I could write a lot about and I felt strongly about. Um, to start with, I did a little bit of research to come up with a basic title and then after doing some more research, uh, I came up with a final title and researched that title in detail before then uh, writing up my report and my research. I went about creating my EPQ by setting out the different type of the different questions within my topic to really answer my question in full and finding resources and knowledge available to get it in full. I went about creating my EPQ through using uh, facilities available at libraries um, it, throughout Moon Keynes and university libraries. Um, I then used that material in order to produce a 5,000 word report. The most challenging thing about the project is having to actually write it and construct it because there's so many different ways you can describe it, so many ways you can write that trying to organise your research is very difficult and trying to make it as good as possible can be very difficult. You have to make sure that you plan your time well and you have to um, continue to keep up with all your work. Everything was similar to school apart from the fact that you had so much responsibility because usually you get reminders in school about when you need to plan stuff in but you were purely allowed to do this on your own so you had to rely on yourself to be responsible and finish it. The most challenging thing was doing it all independently because normally you're used to the teachers always giving you prompts or telling you what to do. So whenever I came up with a problem or an obstacle, you had to completely independently um, do that by yourself. The most challenging thing about the project is the, uh, the research. It's just it's endless. There's so much we have to write research, but yeah, it's, it's good. The most challenging thing about the project was making sure I did all the research myself. There was no one really pushing me. It was all the emphasis was on my research and getting everything down myself and getting it in on time as well. I gained really good skills that all helped me at university and I also um, was able to develop like personal skills that are going to help me in general life and especially when applying for jobs. Although I'm already an EPQ student, it's still been enlightening to hear from researchers, teachers and students about the qualification. Don't miss out on this amazing opportunity, it's a perfect thing to put on your CV and your UCAS application. Right, I'm off to do some research.